previously on the Kadikova Show. Well, Scooby Doo and the Cyber Chase. I really don't like this thing. And I am never going to talk about it. And now he is. Ha ha ha. What a wanker. Greetings and salutations, my beautiful people, and welcome to the Kadikura Show, where I always have to do the dirty deed of deciding whether or not anything really deserves slaughtering or salvaging. And I'm, I'm really sad today, you know, I'm so sad. And why am I sad? You may not be asking. Well, I'll tell you, even if you didn't want to know, I'll tell you, because today I'm going to be talking about a supposedly beloved movie from many people's childhoods and everyone is going to crucify me in the comments for not liking it. So that's going to be a load of fun, isn't it? Well, there's no point delaying it anymore. I've talked about the PS1 game. I've talked about the history of the Scooby-Doo Director VHS special movies. So let's finally cleanse this from my consciousness as we cover today Scooby-Doo and the Cyber Chase, the movie. Ruby Dooby Dying a Hole. Oh god, here we go. The story about Mystery Inc. stuck in a video game. Well, actually, I must be honest. The introduction is decent. It's atmospheric, dark, and mysterious. We get the classic put a hand on another character without calling their name and needlessly scaring the shit out of them, so let's hope they don't have a heart murmur cliche. And we follow the exploits of three scientists typing away at their computers when all of a sudden this laser here activates for supposedly no reason, and then this happens. <laughs> Are you fucking serious? This is our villain for the next 68 minutes. Is it this thing? No. This? Nope. This? Nah. This? Nah. -uh. This? On your bike. This? Dream on. It's this. Look at this face. And listen to the laugh. <laughs> This, ladies and gentlemen, is the Phantom Virus, a thing created by somebody in the school. So yeah, not a man in a mask, but without a doubt, the lamest Scooby-Doo villain ever conceived. But you'll see more about that as we go on. Oh, and I hope you like that spine-chilling laugh, because that is all that this spindly Johnny does in this whole fucking movie. <laughs> But hey, at least he isn't completely useless. Look, he can manipulate technology. So much to the point of making a telephone come to life and attacking people with it. <laughs> nah, that's stupid. Oh! So after more laughing... <laughs> and a triangular chin close-up, we fade into Mystery Inc. on their way to that lab we just saw, where we discover that those people are making a video game based off of Mystery Inc. and their adventures. Imagine a computer game starring all of us! Solving mysteries in cyberspace! <laughs> yeah, wouldn't that be something? Sounds like the best fucking game ever to me. Also, Super Shag sucks at games. Like I hope I do better on Eric's game than this one! <laughs> <laughs> um... Where's the joke? Why is everyone laughing? What's so funny? Where's the You know what? Bollocks to this Mystery Inc. video game. Let's instead play one of my favourite games, and it's a very good game. You can try at home, and it's called Find the Joke. And it's actually a very difficult game. You know why it's so difficult? Because there's no joke. Oh look, they're now at State University, my favourite university. You usually go there after graduating from town school. Hey! Yep, he did it. He's guilty, he made the Phantom, he did it. Where do you think you're going? Um, why do you care? They're four normal people walking around a university. What the hell have you stopped them for? I thought it was because they had a dog with them, but you actually don't give a shit about that, so... I don't like a bunch of punks running around my university. What? How do these guys look any different from anyone else walking around your university? What's your point of existing other than being an excuse to add precious minutes onto the runtime of this film to make it qualify as a director VHS movie, hmm? Also, this is the highlight of our comedy today, people. Sorry to spoil stuff, but this is the funniest bit. And with that wasted time, off to the lab we go to see the two young men from the start, Eric and Bill, to see how the Scooby game is coming along. Then, after more unfunny jokes ensue... 
<laughs> oh, please shut up. <laughs> Professor Lion Mane comes in to tell everyone that Spindly Johnny is out and about, causing Super Shag and Scooby to freak out as planned. And Shaggy gets so scared that he runs right to the front of the group for some reason. Fred then wants to see the laser working, despite Lion Mane saying five minutes ago, We can't do any more experiments with the laser until you boys fix it. But whatever, let's just forget that and watch these people access everything on computers without touching a mouse. Because that's how computer programming works! And then we find out that not only did someone create the spindly Johnny, but it actually came from Eric's game itself. Well, there's no virus in my baseball game, and it's more entertaining. Ah, you're one of those gamers, aren't you? Hmm? But back to the Scooby game, we're told you need to find a box of Scooby snacks in each level while avoiding monsters. Deja vu. But this time there are only 10 levels to go through, which would have been much, much nicer on the real thing. Then the nonsensical shit starts happening. You see, I can suspend my disbelief to a degree, but this is seriously stretching it. In order to win a quarter of a million dollars at a science fair, Eric and Bill built that laser which transports real life objects into the virtual world. And now please, allow me to discuss with all of you today the top whatever number reasons this all makes no fucking sense whatsoever. One, you saw what happened earlier. Why are you even going near that laser? Two, how much damage could anybody do with this technology? You're essentially killing people and making the repair as computer code. What the fuck is wrong with you? Three, why doesn't it just scan stuff Then none of this would be an issue in the first place and would probably be easier to develop? Four, what's the actual point of doing any of this when you made it clear that you can not only develop the characters without the laser but also make all of the levels and the monsters without their real life counterparts in the game? How does this game demonstrate the point or the power of this laser at all. Five, you can program near lifelike water perfectly in your video game, but not a rectangular box of Scooby snacks. Six, get a hacker! Have no fear though, because Sheephead here figured out that you can use these ultra strength magnets in the middle of a robotics and programming lab. Why? To damage the phantom virus. So after being given a few of them, seeing this happen to poor old Scoob and then it not happening again less than a minute later. Pff, come on, if those pins are going to try and kill anyone, please at least let it be Fred. The gang decide to split up and try and find the virus. Hey, you guys, I didn't see how we were gonna split up. Like, do we ever do it any other way? Okay. That's the only charming bit so far. Ah! And while Velma searches through some old books in the basement, a wild spindly Johnny appears with his dumbass face. Jinkies! It's him! Jinkies! There was a chest here a second ago, but then it fucking vanished! How does the phantom virus sneeze with no nose? Oh look, now he's laughing some more and barely doing anything again. <laughs> and despite the fact that Fred and Daphne were holding their magnets the entire time, they then just remembered that he gets hurt by them. The magnets! Yeah. And after the virus yet again does absolutely nothing and runs away, burst villain ever. We cut back to Scooby and Shaggy doing what else? Eating. Man, it's bad enough we're always chasing real ghosts. Now we're chasing computer generated ones. Oh god, okay, don't hate me for this, but for some reason Scott in A's playing Shaggy here is so damn annoying. And he was pretty good in the other roles as Shaggy whenever Casey Kasem wasn't doing it. It worked in Zombie Island just fine, but for some reason in this movie he just sounds like a monotone robot and it makes my ears seep. Thank you for volunteering for our experiment, Mr. Virus. Oh, and Scooby is just annoying anyway. Oh boy, Scooby Rex. Oh dear, the rest of the gang lost the Phantom and get caught by the skeptical officer who literally just exists to delay everyone and pad the movie out, and then... <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm, I'm really sorry, carry on. And then... <laughs> Oh, so I, I'm really, really sorry. I really genuinely am very sorry. I just, I've seen this before. I know which bit is coming up and it really just does get to me. And then Scooby gets cornered by the phantom. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why is that so funny? Look at him! We're supposed to be scared of this thing? Just look at his face! He looks like he wants to tickle you! Why is he just standing there doing nothing again? Look at him! Oh yeah, what are you gonna do now then? Fire lightning, miss, and then laugh? <laughs> of course. <laughs> I'm gonna have a heart attack. No, no, this is this guy. He is definitely the worst Scooby Doo villain ever. Watch him go. He's off war. Oh, of course. Compulsory scene of fooling the bad guy by manufacturing some tits into a costume somehow. Oh, of course. Obligatory scene of music video and being chased by the monster, except this monster fucking sucks. I don't mean to be mean. Except I actually do. But if you have the ability to shoot lightning and manipulate technology whenever you want to, why isn't he doing it all the time? Even here, look. You're the phantom virus you 
can make phones attack people. Fucking telephones. Why are you just proudly taking this beating? You can even manipulate huge technology later on in the movie, so why aren't you doing anything right now? Also, we're a quarter into this movie so far, and nothing interesting has happened at all. I'm bored senseless. As far as the Scooby-Doo director VHS movies go, it's hard to compare them all, but let's do my favourite, Zombie Island. Everything about it is better. The pacing, the way it's animated and looks generally. Look at the shading and the awesome dark foreboding colours. It's like a fucking Dark Souls cartoon. Cyber Chase isn't the worst animated thing I've seen by far, but it's so bland. There's no boldness or contrast or thematic significance in the angles and washed out colours. Everything looks very similar. It doesn't have any build-up, suspense, even any mystery. And even though the voice actors are doing their best, I can't help but think the entire thing has been written so poorly that everyone either sounds bored and monotone or grating and annoying whenever they get a little bit of energy. It's a double-edged sword that never pays off. Back to the story though, there's a pointless running scene that adds more seconds to the runtime and then all the gang all run into each other and fall over despite all being able to clearly see each other running in a straight line. Fucking hell. Leading to someone turning on the laser and oh thank you, thank you, something interesting happened. The main plot and selling point of the movie finally begins no less than 20 minutes in after pointless scenes and no build up. The gang are now stuck in a video game and must fight to get out. So, throw a switch or something and get them out. The game doesn't work that way. They'll have to play through all the levels to get out. You're kidding me. You're kidding me. <laughs> oh my god, even the movie agrees with me. So why the fuck was it so easy before to get the virus out of the game? Why was it so easy to get the Scooby Wax? <laughs> into the game and then out again with even less effort. You're telling me that they can't get things out of their own fucking video game that they made with their own laser that clearly showed that it was actually working a second ago. The rules have all of a sudden just totally changed just because, well, they need to play the whole game or there's no movie, right? Ugh, anyway, contrived and unexplained reason to have them play the game aside, let's go to level one, the moon. Check this out, I'm like a superhero. Oh my God, he's gonna say it. He's gonna say it, isn't he? He's gonna say it. Look. It's super shaggy! Oh, fuck you! Fuck you! You're super shag! Super shag! Super shaggy! But you're magnificent in bed! Why didn't you stay true to yourself, you super shag? Oh dear, look, the spindly Johnny followed them into the game as well. And what does he do? <laughs> of course. Oh no! He's not alone! Could you sound any less interested, Fred? Seriously? I mean, look, the snacks are right there. It's pretty exciting in my opinion. Stop that dog! <laughs> Or how about you use that same finger you used a second ago to shoot him in the face, you twat! I'm sorry, I'm okay. I know that we're not even halfway into this yet, but so far, how can people still tell me that this is a Scooby classic? I, I'm sorry, I don't see it. Especially with such an awful villain. She's like, I'd rather watch the live action movies than this maladderous tripe. Well, hey, we're on level two. Maybe things will get a little bit more interesting. I mean, look, there's a baseball grid for some reason in a coliseum. Mm -hmm, okay. And for some reason, they can't tell that's what it is. Seriously, I know nothing about baseball and even I could see that. I'm a huge baseball fan myself. Yeah, okay, Fred, you know, screw you. And look, there's some skeleton warriors now. That's spooky. <laughs> So now we have over three whole minutes of running away in an empty coliseum and nothing else. No packed in audience taunting the gang and making it all a little bit more tense and no crowds and cheering and roaring and booing. It's just so goddamn boring. There's even a line that's guarding the Scooby snacks, but then he just drops them so the gang just could run over there and grab them. But nah, we need to see another unfunny costume falling scene that leads absolutely nowhere and lasts about 10 seconds. And we also need to see the being very spooky. Well, I'm, I'm not sure that spooky is the right word, honestly. <laughs> Got the snacks, on to level three, prehistoric times. Oh no, the spindly Johnny came back with a T-Rex. Who activated that laser and sent those poor kids into the game? Could be anyone. Even. Someone in this very room. Well, it can't be me because my chin looks like a pair of balls. It looks like a volcano. No shit, Sherlock. Anyway, Scooby and Super Shag then find the volcano drawn in the cave, to which then, oh, you've got to be shitting me. It was right there. You didn't hear or see it. It looks like it's really cooking. Oh, God, here he is again. 
Oh, dude, you know, this looks like a perfect time to use your killer lightning bolt move to get to them. Oh, oh no, don't worry then. Just let them escape. Yeah, that's fine. I'm sure you know what you're doing. Got the snacks and on to level four. And then another song begins. And you know what that means? It's a huge montage. So lots of events are skimmed over in what would have been way more interesting scene. I mean, in level four, the animation is at its finest. Look at the colors and the shading and the slightly blurry, watery aesthetic. It's easily the best looking bit of the film and it isn't even a minute long. But let's not worry about the looks. How about the songs? The Scooby-Doo theme cover from the first montage wasn't awful for the early 2000s, but this song is just fucking weird, man. I can't describe it any other way. It's like a weird techno pop fusion song, I guess, but the lyrics are so literal they match everything you see on the screen. Here it comes, the big, big shark, mummies and sheets. The chorus is fucking stupid. Boom, boom, biggie, biggie. It's repetitive, doesn't add to any kind of cheesiness or scariness factor on either spectrum, so overall it's not great. But to be totally fair, despite how much they skim over the next six levels of the video game that would have been much more awesome to go into more detail with instead of spending 20 out of 70 minutes bumbling around in the state university and then focusing on the least interesting levels to start off with, this short montage segment has the most variety, most varied locations, most diverse visuals, most action. And hey, I can tell you that if this under 30 second Egypt part went into more depth, I would have found that fucking terrifying as a kid. Scary mummies and not knowing what's a statue or not in hundreds of dark, dimly lit, twisting pyramid corridors. This is the kind of thing I'd expect to see in a Scooby-Doo video game, not running in circles in an empty coliseum or slowly jumping around on the moon. And yet again, the phantom virus fails to be any kind of threat, constantly wearing stupid outfits, pulling stupid faces, never using his powers and riding on animals he keeps falling off from. Scary Mary. And whenever Scooby-Doo used music video segments in the cartoons or the movies or whatever, they at least montage chase sequences within the same locations with the same monsters, meaning that it just made a particular scene a little bit more entertaining and action-packed compared to the rest of the story. It was a nice change of pace. But here, it's instead used as an excuse to skip potentially huge, interesting scenes all over the board. And bearing in mind there's another montage scene later that's all set in one of the video game levels, I don't understand why the main selling point of the entire movie was entirely skipped over. Think about it. Six levels were skipped over. Six! That's over half of the entire video game. And it was all done in under three minutes. Was it laziness or just a lack of understanding? Oh look, and now they're at the last level. What a shame. But the level is so hard that no player has ever won it. Not even me. You know, man, if you can't beat your own level that you programmed, you shouldn't be a game designer. Hey, let's see if that woman knows anything. Mm, yeah, that's the Phantom. Yeah, yeah, it's the Phantom. Come on, quit it with the music and the slow pace. It's clearly the Phantom. Ah, Spindly Johnny, run for your lives! And so, in a rather nice creative twist, the gang then run into their video game counterparts in the malt shop. Zoinks! Excuse me, young lady. What? Allow me to introduce myself. Oh! oh. <laughs> Ah, lazy animation 101. Have something going on in the foreground and don't even bother to move the other main characters even slightly. I get it when animators do that on the rare occasion with background characters and establishing shots or whatever, but the main cast? What could they possibly be doing back here to require no movement at all? We don't have time to play around. Oh, what the hell were you just doing then? So obviously the game characters have no idea what the phantom virus is, so Super Shag brings it upon himself to explain what it is exactly. The phantom virus is creepy and has this really scary laugh <laughs> and then they escape via the old mystery machine down the best street in the world with two cafes called cafe right opposite each other and a flower shop called flower. there's also a market and a cafeteria with exactly the same graphic design i want to live here there's stores theaters and parks and lots of tasty food well. <laughs> Wait a second, Scooby. Why are you reinforcing and validating his point? You're not the Cyber Scooby. You don't live here. That one is. Did the animators forget that for a second? Oh, and by the way, all the Cyber characters, along with looking slightly different, also sound slightly different. 
And by that I mean there's a tiny metallic effect added to their voices, and it's subtle, but once you notice it, it's the most annoying thing ever, especially on robotic voice Shaggy's already robotic voice being even more robotic. And boy is he mad! Either way, the gang asks them about the monsters in this level, to which they say that they haven't seen them because they're guarding the Scooby Snacks in the arcade. And why won't they go after them? We just go right back to the beginning of the game, and we like it here. Okay, firstly... That's a shit ending. Don't buy this game. And secondly, I was under the impression that the guys at the lab were controlling these people to help the main gang out. They are game characters after all. They aren't AI characters, otherwise there'd be no game to actually play. So why is it these characters have a consciousness of their own? If you played the game up to this point, would they refuse to complete level 10 and stay in the city devoid of any player input? This logic baffles me on too many levels. It's never made clear at all, even if the lab people are playing as them anyway, which they couldn't be anyway, I guess, because there's only four of them as it is and five of the game characters. So yeah. This is bullshit that makes no sense. Or maybe it's actually pseudo-intellectual commentary foreshadowing the state of video games in the near future, where players always think that they're in control, but instead are merely slaves to AI that always plays itself, overdrawn cinematics, and quick time events. Nah. It's just wank. Well, hey, at least everyone decides to team up against the virus and look for the last box of Scooby Snacks, but not before another scene just like 10 minutes ago, when Fred is yet again being a total fucking moron and- Ah! Spindly Johnny! Run for your lives! Ah, it's the Creeper! Oh, no, literally. Literally, it's the Creeper. That, that, it's a Creeper. That's fucking hilarious. Creeper! So now there are like five enemies from the gang's past mysteries all surrounding them. It's like every villain we've ever faced is here. Oh, fuck off, Velma. Look, this guy on DeviantArt called Legion472 made this awesome canvas on the screen right now detailing most of the Scooby-Doo villains. Not even all of them, most of them. And five are the only ones you can remember and act like that's every single enemy you've ever faced. Oh, fuck off. Who even are you? This isn't the Scooby-Doo. This is not... They're not mystery ink. This isn't... This Oh, I need to poo. Look, Virus, perfect time to shoot them all. They're cornered, but nah. Let's make them try taking off the masks before we all realize that they're actually real because it's a video game. And then Daphne says, That means that they're all real. Even though that's clearly a man in a mask, the monsters will start chasing them, so they split up into their doppelgangers with each monster chasing a particular pet. And I must say, trust the creeper to be chasing the only stereotypically attractive cartoon females. Fucking weirdo. You look perfect. Oh, thanks. You too. We have no character. No, we don't. So they find a trapdoor to subdue the creeper and then... He's climbing back up! So then press the trapdoor button again. Fucking hell, this is painful! Let's just see what the Freds are up to. That walking handbag will reach us any minute now. Ooh. Let's hope Peter aren't watching this movie. Oh, 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 yeah. yeah that, that's a dead alligator. Ooh. Let's hope Peter aren't watching. Now the Velmas are in a wax museum where they run into Iron Face, who accidentally falls into a vat of hot wax, but gets straight back up. The wax is hardening. He can't move. Yes, he can. Let's get out of here. And yet another completely pointless scene. And now, even though a scene is coming up that did actually make me chuckle, it's still lazy in its execution. The Scoobies run away from Jaguaro around the merry-go-round, vanish from it, and then end up to the right with a lever. Even though when they initially vanish, there are no Scoobies and no lever there. Jesus. Oh my, wow. No. he He's definitely dead. That killed him earlier. I don't care if this is a game. If the gang can get hurt in the game world, then that thing died. Ooh. Let's hope Peter- Oh, here we are at another montage with another song, which isn't as weird as the last song, but it is a boring fucking song that doesn't do anything other than loop the same boring melody and chords over and over again for two or so minutes. Look it up on YouTube, it's called Double Double Joint. It's very boring. As is this montage, actually. No action, no decent animation, no suspense, nothing entertaining happens at all. I was so bored I even noticed this mistake with the smoke cutting out of existence near the end of a shot. Oh look, forgot about these two for a second. What are they up to? Well, duplicating the themselves apparently hmm. that is fucking inexcusable i'm sorry okay when i said this film was bad on twitter i had legions of followers declare it a scooby-doo masterpiece or if not that just a really good scooby-doo movie and i was being too harsh but let me ask you how is this supposed really good scooby-doo movie getting away with shit like this i mean yeah we all make mistakes but that they copied the same damn character people had to animate this you can't let that slide every frame had to be animated hours had to be 
spent on each individual frame potentially. And yet, nobody noticed that. Oh, also, do you want to see the most pointlessly long and random and shitty Deus Ex Machina looking for another character scene you've ever seen in a cartoon? scooby Doo's, where are you? I wonder where they are. Well, we're here. There they are. Come on, Scooby. That entire bit didn't need to be in the movie at all. What did it add? Nothing at all. It's almost rhythmic with how awful it is. I mean, even the gaps in the character dialogue are nearly exact from each other. So that just adds to how unnatural it all feels. Oh, and Shaggy forgot that he had a super magnet all along. What a bummer. And the same magnet that could pick up killer pins from 20 feet away couldn't affect anything, including the virus, while in Shaggy's pocket. Tweak me a new nipple movie. Also, if the magnet can still do this to the character, of the game because of what they're made out of, shouldn't the entire environment glitch out as well? Aren't they made out of the same stuff? Aren't they modelled the same way? I don't understand how any of this shit works. What's wrong with Cyber Shag? Well, I don't think there's anything wrong with it, but you need to be sure that you know and trust the opposite person so much to a degree where you think that you're ready to take that next big step in your online relationship. Ah, well, time to get the last box of Scooby Wax. <laughs> And the virus actually starts doing stuff now. Look, good God, I never thought I'd see the day. Fred gets in with Shaggy's magnet and despite standing completely still, manages to trip over. Fuck this movie and drop dead, Fred. No, no, not that one. I, I will always love you, Rick Bell, but no, not that one. So in a series of more boring events, Cyber Scooby ends up helping the gang to try and grab the snacks. I've never seen Scooby so brave. Oh, I get it. That's Cyber Scooby. Scoob going for the snack. Thanks for spelling it out for us, Shaggy. It's not like we were told and showed what was going on before. By the way, could you pause any longer to pad out the film length even more? And so, for some reason or another, they grab the snacks and the virus fades away. I figured it was antivirus software that needed to kill the fucker and not just beating a video game, but whatever. And now the gang, for a still unexplained reason, must leave the cyber gang behind and return home. Let's sink in 101. Listen what? Make the lips move with the words. Cry, Scooby. Lesson failed. Go home and cry. <laughs> But who created the virus? Well, it's time for Mr. Inc. to deduce the juice. Fred mentions the baseball diamond in the Rome level, Velma mentions the batting cage in the final level, and Daphne says that in the moon level... The phantom virus shouted, play ball! Okay, Daphne, why are you even in Mystery Inc? That's not a clue, that's a fucking figure of speech. And what's funny is that there were loads more incriminating things he said related to baseball. Fucking hell, I even compiled them for you. Let me introduce you to the home team. For the home team's mascot. How's this for a heavy hitter? You're in the major leagues now. If you thought my hitting was good, wait till you see my pitching. You're down to your final out. And so for some reason, the only one that gives a fuck about baseball in the lab right there, right now, starts trying to run away. Not only making him look clearly guilty, I mean, there was no fucking evidence on who actually made the virus at all, so he could have gotten away with it, but also, why was the lab door locked and why can't he get out? This is lazy even for Scooby-Doo mystery wrapping up. Bill felt like a lonely Larry because Professor Lion Mane didn't like his baseball game as much as Eric's Scooby-Doo game, and he wanted the prize money, so made the virus to try and kill Eric. What the fuck? Kinda dark, but also terrible, because for some reason this moron decided to program his only method of executing his plan to never attack anyone, act like a total idiot, talk like a baseball player, and even draw a baseball diamond in ancient Rome in order to give his interests away. Look, at least with a person in a mask, the bad guy thinks everything is going his or her way until Mystery Inc. forced them to make a mistake or catch them and unmask them. That's not part of their plan, hence they solve the mystery. But this Bill character decided to purposefully spend potential hours crafting and programming a killer computer virus that can enter the real world, but made extra time aside to make sure that it was the worst possible and lamest and funniest villain the gang would ever face, along with giving away exactly who it was that made it. This isn't a mistake or a foiled plan from Mystery Inc. This was incompetent fucking coding from someone deliberately crafting this virus to fail from the get-go. I thought this guy was in a quarter of a million dollar competition. I thought he was a treasured and intelligent student. How the hell does any of this make any goddamn sense? But apparently, Bill would have gotten away with it somehow despite his shitty plan if it weren't for those meddling kids. Ha 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 ha. 
<laughs> and the film ends with Scooby desperately trying and failing to speak English. Scooby Dooby Doo. How long did they beat you for trying to say your own name and not even doing a good job at it? The end. Or at least I wish it was. Yes, there's a post credit scene, and that's when I literally gave up hope. In this utterly pointless and unfunny ending, the characters talk directly to us as they talk about their favorite bits to film while making the movie, and my god, it's cringe inducing to say the least. There are even slideshow images on other memories the characters had on the set. My god, I can't watch this anymore. Just because I wear nice clothes and like to shop doesn't mean I don't have a sense of adventure. Just because I literally have no character whatsoever doesn't mean I literally have no character whatsoever. Whatsoever. Shag Scooby. Um, no thank you. That's bestiality, I think you'll find. What was your favorite part of Scooby Doo in the Cyber Chase? Well, Racer. Well, Racer. And in the very, very end, Scooby managed to get Cyber Scooby back from the game while they were on the set. But wait. W weren't they all filming on a set? If that's the case, shouldn't the laser technically be a prop? A means to the story that's too ridiculous to realistically exist? And shouldn't Cyber Scooby be an actor, meaning they wouldn't need to take him from the game? Oh, I don't know, it's over now, I don't care. And now I hope that at least some of you understand why I really do not like this movie. And don't get me wrong, I loved it as a kid, but Jesus, watching it back today was not only kind of painful, but also boring and sloppy compared to other Scooby VHS movies like Zombie Island. The writing isn't cheesy or entertaining, it's just shit. The voice actors sound tired. The animation is okay, but so drab and samey. The plot takes random delays and pauses for no reason. The main characters repeat themselves and act like idiots and delay more things for no reason. The villains pause and delay more things for no reason. The most interesting ideas are over and done with in less than three minutes in a montage. It just never seems to get to the point or execute its ideas in an entertaining or interesting way. Not to mention, the phantom virus is the worst thing ever. So much so that even I can't believe that Shaggy and Scooby Scooby of all characters are scared of it. So, you know what that means? This movie certainly gets the slaughter. Mm. But before I do that, I noticed something in the special features of this DVD. Something very special indeed. It's actually a music video. A music video entitled, Scooby Doo and Shaggy Love to Eat. You can't make this shit up. Maybe this will be the saving grace. So, I'm ready. Let's begin. Like it's time to eat! There's a malt shop at the end of the road. We love their apple pie. Yeah. Triple cheeseburgers and fries on the side. It, it brings a tear to our eyes. eyes. At the end of the counter, you'll find our favorite seat. Cause Scooby Doo and Shaggy love to eat. <laughs> <laughs> we love to eat all day and night. For food we won't hold back. <laughs> and if you want a mystery solved, you better have some Scooby snacks. Oh, waiter, could you make it a double? Hey, do you want to know a secret? Look, first of all, I'm not actually dead. Second of all, you appear to be in my bed. Thirdly, the outtakes will be on in just a second, so please stay tuned. Fourthly, my tripod just broke, hence why I'm using my hands as a makeshift tripod. And fifthly, are you wondering where I got this lovely swanky t-shirt from? Well, wonder, don't wonder. It says there. It says Games Grabber right there. So yeah. And for those who aren't aware, Games Grabber is an awesome site in which anybody can sign up and it's kind of like a Pinterest of video games. You basically go around the internet and grab particular games through images that you have in your collections. You can pick your favourite games or show off to everybody all the new games that you've got, message each other and discuss pure games on the site, follow a blog that details specific new releases and even some sales that are going on on particular games. And yes, even I have my own collection and on my collection I not only have all of my newest games that I'm buying and sticking on the shelf and playing and ones that I'm using for current quickies and stuff, but I also have all of my video accessories, everything I use to make these videos that you watch, it's all there, and what's great about my collection is that I've made it so that you can buy everything directly through the site. And also a massive congratulations to the last people that entered the last competition that we did through Games Grabber a while ago. Those two people that did it the best, without cheating at least, were Adam BM and Scandal123, yes they are the usernames, I'm sure that's not what they're actually called, but you two, well done very well, very much well done, very you. 
yes, Games Grabber will be in contact with you shortly to go through the prizes and everything, and you can pick the games that you want out of the competition, everything, it's all good. But yeah, please consider going into the description to look at my collection, and um, ah, here are the outtakes. <laughs> this is very unprofessional, I'm very sorry. <laughs> Computer programming works! Because today I have to cover a supposedly beloved movie that. Fuck. <laughs> oh. Um. Uh, oh. <laughs> Lord Reginald Stanley Pickles III has just come in. <laughs> what did you fucking do? What is going on? <laughs> what is even going on? <laughs> oh, Stanley. Or at least a really good Scooby-Doo movie, but how did the supposed really scud... Really scud? <laughs> 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 <laughs>